was a very different era. We, we signed a record deal and Christian Records gave us £25,000 to spend on musical instruments, which is unimaginable now. And uh, we bought a lot of weird shaped guitars and we got them to the studio and f found out they didn't stay in tune. <laughs> Rockfield was like a studio that was quite mythical and we felt locked out of it, you know, as a local band. It was a studio that proper bands went to, not, you know, scruffy bands, I guess. Fuzzy Logic was just a learning curve of being in a different studio, in a big kind of studio. We really had no idea what we were doing. And I think everyone was a bit like, oh. Oh, does this sound good? I don't know. I mean, we're in a big place. And uh, also we'd never worked somewhere with air conditioning before. And uh, that used to drive the tuning well. There's plenty of stuff there we've forgotten about. Uh, the demos and stuff like that, but they just sounded so... Yeah, and there was some stuff that they were wanting to forget about that I kept like, no, 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 that should go on. There's, you know, better uh, digital to analog converters, analog to digital converters, um, you know, just uh, felt that the record itself could sound better. Uh, all the B-sides, I think, are great, and they're out of print. I mean, I think they're the greatest band since Led Zeppelin. I think, I think waiting to happen is a be sad because it, it's a bit weak lyrically, I think. You know, it's, it's quite catchy. It's, it's a, there's a reason for it to exist, for, for the music and the, the catchiness, but... I think that the lyrics are maybe a bit ill, Ill conceived. I remember playing a lot of Super Mario when, when I was here to the point where I was dreaming about Mario. Playing Super Mario Kart. I, I mean, it's, it's interfering with all my dreams. <laughs> we didn't know Howard when we recorded the song. I mean, we knew him first on, from the news. Uh, leading some kind of alternative James Bond lifestyle who seemed to be fighting the system and making a nice living out of something he believed in. And then, yeah, we had the song, Griff wrote the song, and then we started hanging out with him. Yeah, because the song's about implausible things, yeah, and unimaginable things like hanging out with Howard Marx and the guy from Sparks, everything that's in the realm of fantasy. And then he wrote a book and um, by coincidence the book came out the same week as the album and uh, started to turn up at, at gigs and then um, give us advice. It was like a catchphrase that um, I think Ben from Guitar developed. And there's a link to Rockfield where there was always guacamole on the table at lunchtime. And then, <laughs> this guy's probably three weeks in, I know. Somebody just goes, guacamole! There was a different desk here ten years ago. They had a 48 track, Neve Flying Feet, the desk. Um, and the 23rd track was sort of possessed in the 1990s. It had the sort of, the sort of wood panelling 
on the ceiling that was all the rage in the 1970s and uh, uh, there was 23 panels then the record was released and it went to number 23 in the charts quite a spooky album you know? <laughs> Like it. 